films as cameraman hunting. <laughs> In any industry, there's unsung heroes of sorts, or those that don't get the credit that they deserve. And here at Canadian Whitetail, it's no different. And that person here that works so hard for so little acclaim is our very own cameraman extraordinaire, Mr. Richard Caseman. The first thing any cameraman must do is give up almost all of your personal hunting time. And that's a lot of sacrifice to come and follow us with a camera. And that's just the sacrifice that Richie's made for the past several years. This is what a cameraman is wearing. What we call it. Penny mask, which is no. similar material to a woman's underwear. And although we can be pretty hard on Richie, and he's given up most of his own hunting, it has came with a lot of reward as well, as Richie has been the one behind the camera capturing the excitement of the hunts for many of the biggest wild whitetails ever on film. Oh my god, Richie. <laughs> I really don't know what to say, Richie. Like, I, I don't know. On Canadian Whitetail alone, Richie dedicates over 100 days a year solely behind the camera, hoping to catch that once-in-a-lifetime hunt on film again and again. While Richie loves to hunt, it's far outweighed by Richie's passion to capture on film the stories that we love to share. When Richie does get a chance to hunt, it's for one evening, maybe two if he's lucky. And that's only if the winds and conditions are wrong for one of the deer that we want to go after. And last year, on that one day a year that he gets to hunt, well, Richie had an opportunity at a deer that we all dream about. Last season, in an obvious lapse in decision making on our part, we let Richie hunt opening day with Jason running the camera. Now last year, on that one day that Richie had to hunt all year, found him in a blind after a deer that we called the club buck because of the huge drop time that he sported. And on that one day to hunt, well, the club buck made an appearance, and we were sure it was Richie's chance to be the hero and take this great buck. However, the giant passed just out of range, and after this encounter, well, Richie was just too busy filming to get back for another try at the club buck. Well, last year for the rest of the season, Richie didn't have another opportunity to hunt because he was too busy filming for both of our TV shows, Canadian Whitetail and Into the Wild. But if you fast forward to this season, Jason and I discussed it and decided that it was time and well deserved that Richie was given the opportunity to hunt first, to be the hero and the star of his own episode, and I was going to be his cameraman. The buck that Richie picked out to try and hunt was a deer that we'd watched since back in 2008, a wide 5x5 five five with exceptional mass, and still in full velvet, Richie's dream buck. When opening day came, unfortunately the winds were wrong for Richie to get in and after the big velvet buck. So we headed into a blind that we had set up in the river bottom, hoping to have a look at a nice split brow tine buck that we had scouted out earlier in the summer. We had set up this spot in July for a split brow tine buck that I wanted to get a closer look at once the season came. So the channel that pinches off to the east there, it gets a little wider as it goes west and then goes up into a bunch of agricultural fields. And now being time to head in, knowing his limited time to hunt, Richie wanted to take a few practice shots before heading in to ensure there were no mistakes.
for me, seeing Richie walk across the field heading in without a tripod and a camera was very odd. And I also noticed how much heavier my pack was now hauling all of the gear. Now we start the ascent. It's a steep, rough climb down into the river bottom, but once there, we got in and settled. Richie, who set up this wine and put all the trees in the way? It wasn't me. here quite a few years ago and they kind of let it sit for a few years and figured may as well just see what's here and I, there's a really cool looking split brow time buck so we're gonna see if we can get a look at him might be the one we're in a spot that Dean always used to hunt and then Dean grew up host a TV show and got a cameraman and now the spot that Dean used to hunt, he films his cameraman hunting. <laughs> Bizarre world. So we got the back of the blind sealed up, we got the window open, and we made the Ozark shoot right across the window, that's where we find the best results, and uh, it's only if our wind goes down that edge, hopefully that'll save us. It'll save us. just got in here about 20 minutes ago and already two deer have shown up. It's good to see. A little later in the evening, a great looking up and coming 4x4 showed up. I looked over and as Richie's luck would have it, there he was, the split brow time buckweed came to look at had made an appearance. Light fading fast, it was now a race with time for the split brow time buck to work his way close enough for a shot. Unfortunately, the split brow time buck heads the wrong direction and away from us. The next day of Richie's hunt, well, all conditions were perfect, so we headed in after the big 5x5, five five, Richie hoping that the deer was still sporting his thick golden velvet. The 5x5 five five Richie wanted to hunt was traveling by a blind that we had set up earlier in July, and it was also a location that had proved very rewarding for us in the past. And now we were headed in, hoping the Big Five was still Richie's dream buck, a deer in full velvet. Heading in, well I know that we can be kind of hard on Richie, but I was really hoping that he'd have an encounter with the buck, knowing that Richie had limited time to hunt before he needed to get back to work. He's 
got a real short G4 on one side, but he's got his, his right side is just amazing. You know, for me, I've never taken a deer with a bow, so any deer is a big accomplishment, actually. Just get settled in here with Richie. Got the right wind finally to have a sit for the old 10, and uh, he's a pretty cool buck. He's, I'm sure he's better than 160. Richie wanted a deer in full velvet. I checked the trail camera here two days ago, and he was still in perfect, perfect full velvet. velvet. So. It only takes him about 10 minutes to shred it, so who knows. Early in the evening, the does and fawns begin making their way out to the fields. Still early in the evening, we looked to the right and there we could see, sun glistening off his still perfect velvet. It was Richie's target buck. Welcome back. Before the break, cameraman Richie was about to have an opportunity at his dream buck on one of the only days of the year that he had to hunt. Unlike last year with the club buck, this year the 5x5 was well within range and Richie was going to waste no time at his chance to finally be the hunter on an episode and take his first archery whitetail. Richie, you got him. That was too awesome. I don't think that one's going very far. <laughs> oh, we saw him drop right there. He's an awesome buck though, eh? Oh. He's heavier than I thought he was. You could see under his twos and threes how heavy he was. He's perfect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That uh, was an awesome that's too buck. cool. It's amazing because that deer was here like three seasons ago, or four seasons ago, three years ago when Jason was hunting a deer that we called Blaze. The very first episode. Awesome old buck. It was the first episode we ever produced of Canadian Whitetail. He's a 205 inch deer that had oh, triple brow tines on both sides and he had fifth, or 46 oh, inches of brow super tines. Deer. Incredible deer. And the coolest part was this big old 10 was about 15 yards behind him when Jason shot that deer. And your deer so came neat. out just about in the exact same yeah, spot. Yeah, right in that corner. I don't think you went too far. Right <laughs> no. It's good have to... a look. I see your uh, Luminoff out there anyway. Yeah. That's for better blood than that. Well, we don't have to worry too much. We see him. No, yeah, he's, he's, there, but he's right there. Always give him time, just in case. Went around to this old trail. Oh. <laughs> now that's a velvet buck, eh? <laughs> that is what I've always wanted. Heavy too, eh? Wowzers, he ever heavy? Oh, that's so there. awesome. <laughs> He's heavier than I thought he was. <laughs> oh. Perfect awesome velvet. Buck. Awesome buck. That is so awesome. Gorgeous. Thank you very much. Dean and Steve and Jason and everybody else that helps on the team. And letting Shot. the cameraman sit, that is much appreciated. Well, I'm still wondering about that. <laughs> Well, I'm full of cameraman now for the rest of the year. I am tagged out. When we when we do an episode, all you really get to see is the, the, the 22 minutes of success. You don't get to see 
the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that, oh. are, that are spent to get to that 22 minutes of success. And uh, and you know, Richie's sitting behind the camera and he's working all that time. That you know, there's a lot of work to do that people don't always see. You know, like equipment to clean, to take care of, footage to download, and you know, the the first thing everybody thinks being a cameraman on a hunting show is like a dream job. But the first thing you have to understand is that you're probably not going to get to hunt much anymore because no, that's true. It's you're filming, but <laughs> it's it's a passion in itself, and uh, you know, I absolutely love being a cameraman. I get to see all these great deer. But it is nice to hunt once in a while too, and it's a, it's a little don't lie. It's a little nicer to hold it yourself. <laughs> well, it's pretty cool, that's for sure. I'm super happy for you, bud. Thank you. Um, I couldn't be happier. Again, man. All right, work time. You got some footage to download. <laughs> Well, I might have teased Richie more than just a little bit about why the host was filming the cameraman hunt first. But the truth is we're all extremely happy that Richie had the opportunity at his dream buck. It was very well deserved. But now it's time for Richie to get back to work and behind the camera so you can enjoy next week's episode of Canadian Whitetail.